This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Ladies and gentlemen, guess who's here? Uh, that's uh, Steve Kravitz. Guess who hey, is, Alex. Guess who isn't here? Me. Right. Oh man. Right. I have. Hey, had... when did you when did you shave your head? What do you mean when I shave my head? I get a haircut every now and then. My wife does it. No, it looks like you shaved it. Well, there's hair here, but it's is very, it? very light. It's shorter than it's I've ever seen it. Yeah. <laughs> it's usually that way when I start off. Excuse, oh, okay. excuse me if I'm coughing today. I'm a mess. I'm an absolute mess. You know, I have no idea what it was. Let me turn on the air conditioning more here. Uh, I, I have no idea what it is. It's not it's cold. It's a cold. It's not. It's not COVID. But right. how long do colds usually last for you? Because they usually only lasted for me like three days. Right, like a few days. Yeah, this has been going for, it's been going since, what, Sunday? Something like that? Yeah. That's what, four days? Yeah. And hey, it's, you get over it. It doesn't seem to be, it, it seems to be a little better today, but uh, I, I, right. it doesn't feel that way, you know. Right. And I can barely talk. Um, you know. Well, you sound hoarse. Well, I, I canceled my show last night. I may cancel right. the show tonight. I saw that. Yeah, because I just, uh, you know, I'm feeling like crap. Right. So how you doing? You've been having toothy problems, right? Uh, a lot, yeah, a lot. I'm in a lot of pain right now. Really? Yeah, I'm not real happy. Not that I don't want to go lie down. Uh, yeah, well, maybe we'll maybe just make this 15 minutes and it's called quits. We're both all right us. you got a deal because we're both out of it okay right yeah i took like two uh ibuprofen 800 milligram ibuprofen so i took 1600 milligrams of ibuprofen and it hasn't even numbed the pain really so yeah. what 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 okay tell me tell me what happened you were having tooth problems right right and i told you a bottom tooth fell out yeah. And I think it just broke off. I think most of the tooth is still in the gums. Mm -hmm. And it's. I think it's getting infected. Okay, so you went to the dentist. Right. Okay, what's... what's... No, 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 I, I see the oral surgeon on the 19th of October. The 19th of October, you're in pain now. I know. So, So what has to be done, did they say? Well, this is it. They, they they say all of my bottom teeth have to be removed. All of them. All of them. Wow. So then, what are they going to do? I have no idea. That's why I'm going for the console first. Yeah, I mean, they should come up with a good, better answer than just pulling all your teeth. Right. 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 There has to be a second phase to this. Yes. Maybe you should get a second opinion. Maybe. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I've never had a doctor say that to me. They've gone, well, that yeah. tooth doesn't look good. We have to get rid of it or whatever, but, you know. Right. Wow, that's amazing. So. Well, from my, from my sordid past, there's not many bottom teeth to be dealt with. Oh, oh really? Yeah, most most of this is a, a a partial. Oh, okay. So you've had a you've had something in there. Yeah. Okay. But so now one of the teeth that anchored it, that was one of the teeth that broke. So the partial isn't isn't really anchored real well, oh, and wow. it's causing a lot of discomfort. Wow, wow. Excuse me, folks, if I'm doing this every now and then because my eyes are also tearing. 
At first, we suspected what I had was allergies. Right. But I don't know. It's not COVID. That we know. Okay. Right. I, right. I, I have my sense of taste and smell, and I don't. Uh, I don't. I'm not running a temperature. So. Right. Right. So it's just your your basic cold. Yeah, but not a basic one. This is a terrible cold. I mean, how did I get it? I don't know, Alex. You're such a germaphobe. I don't know how you got no, it. No, wait a minute. How did I get it? I haven't been me. out. I don't know. I don't follow you around. I haven't been out. And when I go out, I wear a mask. So how did right. I get it? Do you wash your hands? Not all the time, no. Maybe that's how you got it. Well, I, you know, I... Okay, I'll go wash my hands more. So. <laughs> Boy, we are a mess, aren't we? Right. Maybe you just got a cold. Who that, knows how you got it? You just got it. There could be, but I, I usually don't get it to the point where I go, I can't do a show tonight. You know? Right. Uh, maybe it's just my age. I can't take a cold like this. You know, I'll get used to. Maybe, maybe it affects you harder. Yeah, yeah. You know, it, 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 it's it's stronger and it's it's more potent. So anyway, so you've got this tooth problem. Right. Are you in pain? Yes. And they will, don't do anything about it? No, they gave me uh, 800 milligram ibuprofen. Okay, I have 800 milligram ibuprofen here that my wife gets. They work. Right. They help. You know. Right, I took two of them and it didn't help. Really? Yeah. So why can't they get to this a little faster? I don't know. I'm gonna. I guess I'll call the dentist and see if there's an oral surgeon that can see me sooner. Yeah, because this is, you know, I mean, you should be attended to immediately because you're in pain. Right. Right. Well, they go. Well, just remain in pain until the middle of October, and we'll get to see you. No. Right. No. You're in pain. We're gonna take care of the pain now. Right. And then we'll deal with the teeth later. Right. But apparently they're not dealing with the pain. You so know. do I call the dentist? Yes. I guess you call the dentist and say, hey, you know, well, who, who recommended the oral surgeon? The dentist? Yes. Okay. And then did you get back to the dentist and say he can't see me till? Yes. And that's why they prescribed the ibuprofen. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Boy, I don't know what to tell you. I'd say get another dentist. Right. <laughs> you know. But then again, you don't know the next dentist isn't going to be just as horrible. You know? Right, 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 right. I mean, I don't, uh, I, I, I don't trust doctors like I used to. No, not at all. You not know? at all. Like I have this, in, this, uh, this uh, my, my internist or the, you know, the guy is my go-to guy for being a doctor the quarterback of your team well he is the he's the traffic cop he says okay right. you've got this go see so and so right right this, right right so. so anyway i get my yearly checkup and he says you know you have blood in your urine you better see your urologist i can give you the name of a urologist right and i'm thinking to myself number one i've told him any number of times i always have blood in my urine I've had it for the last 15, 20 years. Really? Some Just a trace. It's just a trace. It's not a lot of it. it it's right. just been there. It, 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 you, some people have it, you know. It comes from maybe my prostate or whatever. But anyway, right. no big deal. I even mentioned it to my urologist who he recommended. He said, I'll, I can recommend a urologist. Don't you remember right. you recommended a urologist to me? Don't you remember right. I went to him? Don't you remember I had this cancer operation? Yeah. You know, uh, he, uh, I can recommend, and then he, then he says, uh, uh, so you got blood in your ear. But you know that. Right. You know? And then he goes, um, then you've got, uh, you, you're, you, you're, you have slightly lowered uh, platelet levels in your blood. Well, slightly. What does that mean? What does that mean? Well, if it were a lot, I could have leukemia or a lot of other things. But right. at that, it could be just from the radiation I had. You know? Right. But he takes none of this into consideration. He says, he'll do another blood test in a month. 
And I'm going, I'm supposed to like trust this guy. Right. And he doesn't. How long have you you had him? Oh, God. 15 years. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, he's he's a good doctor, you know. The thing I like about him, he's a cardiologist. Oh, okay. Okay. And so, as a cardiologist, uh, he uh, can check my ticker, you know, which he does every now and then, and make sure it's in good shape. So I get two right. for the price of one, you know. There you go. And but I mean, I'm getting a little sick of him not remembering what's wrong with me. You know, write it down somewhere. Oh, he has. Right, he, right. He always read has, about it before I come in. He always has blood in his urine. You know? Right. Yeah. And, I don't know about you, but if I'm pissing blood. I'm going to the ER. Well, yeah, but, I'm, but it's not like you can see the blood. It's like a trace of the blood. Oh, okay. It's not like you can see the blood. There's blood in my urine. It's a trace right. of blood that they can detect in the urine. So, you know, whatever. Hi there, folks. Alex here with bloody urine. Uh, <laughs> mm. Yeah, there, there you go. There, there's the title of your new show, The Bloody Urine Show. The Bloody Urine Show. Everybody with bloody urine, li- listen to the program. We'll talk about bleeding in your blood in your urine. Enjoy the meal. No, I mean, uh, I, it, it's just, you know, don't, don't go panicky on me on something you already know. Right. You know. And I, I talked to my urologist uh, about it, about the fact that I have blood in my urine. He said, eh, no big deal. Right. He says, not unless it's a lot. Right, right, right. You know, I, I said, I think it's for my prostate. He said, it might be. He said, it could be coming from anywhere. Yeah. So, you just something in your system. You happen to be, you happen to have blood in your urine. So, hi folks. Alex with blood in my urine. How are you? <laughs> This is an invigorating show. And there is, of course, uh, 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 Stephen Kravitz with the bottom part of his mouth falling apart. Right, 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 right. Even my jaw hurts. Really? Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. That's my cough. I haven't been coughing much today. but No, no, you haven't coughed much at all. I'm actually sucking on a, uh, a lozenge. Which is helping. Oh, are you? Yeah, keeping me. What uh, kind of lozenge? Uh, a, J- a Jerry Lewis lozenge. <laughs> Flagon. Uh, lozenge. Uh, no, it's just a, uh, what do you call it? Uh, I don't want to do a, a, a commercial for them. But right. It, but it's Halls. Sugar free, triple smooth action. There you go. See, I, because I'm on a diet and I don't want to take the stuff with sugar in it. So. And it'll rot your teeth. And then, as I said the other day, if I then want to do an impression of fire, oh, the place is on fire. Oh, there you go. That's the sound effect. That's the first sound effect I ever learned. Really? Yes, yes. And I think the last sound effect I ever learned. <laughs> <laughs> But that's how they would do fire in radio. You know, oh, there's a fire in the room. Or, or or there's a fireplace. Right, 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 right. Yeah. Why don't they make these? You know, if they wanted to make these, really, they want to have a selling point. Why don't they say, it is a Hall's mentholiptus whatever in new soundproof packaging. Right. Right, right, yeah. right, right. But if you're in a movie theater and all of a sudden you got to go because you got you got you got to take a, a Hall's mentholiptus and you got to go. Everybody's going to shut the fuck up. Right, or somebody else flyer. Somebody could yell fire. I mean, isn't that your special effect? But in a crowded theater, I don't want to do right. that. Right, right, right. You know, and I have you ever yelled? Had anybody yell fire in a crowded theater? No. And if they did, do you think you'd panic? Knowing no. the kind, of, knowing the kind of people that go to movies today. No, I don't think I would panic. Yeah. So. I would certainly look around. 
Well, you would check it out to make sure. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. you would check it out to make sure. But, um, uh, yeah, but don't, don't yell fire in a crowded theater. Well, I don't know. Well, I don't know. It's against the law. Is it? Yes. Is it? Yes. I don't know if it's against the law. I believe it is. I believe it's against the law to yell fire in a crowded theater. I think it's against the law to create panic. But what if he yelled? He's yelling okay. fire in oh, a crowded oh, oh, theater. Okay. Ward. What if I yelled fire in a shopping mall? Would that be okay? No. Okay. So so why is a crowded theater any different than a shopping mall? Well, both places you would create panic. I see. Is that what they're saying? Yes. Okay. Because uh, um, and, and people could get hurt, uh, you know, stamping each other to the door. Oh, what we're saying is that it's dangerous because people are inconsiderate. How do you get that? Because they stamp all, all over each other, just trying to get out the out of the way. I'm out of here. Let me go. Right, right, right. Well, bird mentality. I mean. My indication would be women and children first. Right. See, that's the proper attitude to have. Right, right, right. But would you do that if there was a fire right behind you? Fuck no. I'm getting out of there as fast as possible. <laughs> see? See? Yeah. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. I, I don't intend to be that wonderful about things. That yeah. noble? That noble. Yeah. Are you Are you noble that way? What would you do if there, was, if there was literally fire in a crowded theater? Number one, would you yell fire? No. No. Well, I mean, if there was a fire, if there actually was a fire, yeah, I would yell fire. The, but, but wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on a second. But then, when, what would be the result of that? Hopefully, it would save lives if there was an actual fire. Or it might get people trampled. Right, or burnt to death if you don't say anything. What would you say? Uh, I would say, well, you know, there's an old joke about the guy who uh, who fell into a vat of chocolate at a chocolate factory. Never heard it. And, Go ahead, tell the joke. And, and was drowning to death in the chocolate. And finally he just yelled fire. And somebody rushed over and pulled him out of the chocolate. And he said, why did you yell fire? He said, because if I yelled chocolate, nobody would come. Right. Right? Sure. So that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So that, 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 that's the old joke, huh? Yeah. Oh, man, my nose is just dripping. Oh, it's just a mess. So anyway, What? So the two of us are just a mess today, is what you're saying. Today is not a good day. I mean, how bad is that tooth hurting you? Bad enough to go lay down when we're done. Well, we're doing this in the afternoon, and you have about an hour before it's at its worst. Which right. is, are you ready? Which is, it'll be tooth hurty. Good night. Good night. That's the worst joke I ever heard. That's the worst joke I've ever heard. Yeah, my, my ex producer, Albert Reynoso, came up with that. He said, you know what, 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 what is dental time? Well, I don't know. Tooth hurty. And he thought it was funny as all heck. Uh, yeah, we got a good laugh out of it. Uh huh. <laughs> well, what, what are you going to do? I mean, on top of it, this is going to be expensive, isn't it? Yes. Where are you going to get the money? Don't know. Oh boy. Oh boy. Is there any way? Is there any kind of charity you can go to to get help? Uh, there's a comics helping comics thing. Oh, okay. All right. That's something. Oh, right, I'll have to give him a call. Yeah. By the way, before we go, I, I, yeah. watch, I watched the latest movie with uh, Clint Eastwood. Oh, yeah? Is it good? No. <laughs> no? No. No, it's pretty terrible. And Mar really? Marjorie said to me, well, boy, you know, he's getting old and he really can't act anymore. I said... Clint never could act. Right. Clint was a movie star. Clint wasn't an actor. Right. Am I right or am I, am I wrong? And he was no, very, you're right. He was very nice you're to you right. and you're very generous to him. But 
he, uh, he, I said he never was a good actor. You know, he ran the emotional gamut from A to B. Right. As the right. old joke goes. And uh, so anybody, but as I watched it, I figured I'll go back and I'll watch uh, Sudden Impact with us. I'll watch the scenes with, uh, with uh, uh, Stephen in it. And uh, you were good. Thank you. You were just great as punk, what, number three? Number two. Number two, okay. Cronies Hawkins, Crony Hawkins. Cronies Hawkins, number two. Cronies Hawkins. Crony number two. Crony number two. Okay. Right. If anybody ever has a chance, you can go to, uh, in fact, you can go to HBO Max if you have it, and go watch Sudden Impact with uh, Clint Eastwood. And in the scene of them coming out of a courtroom, uh, he's one of the thugs that right. winds up in the elevator with, with him. And by the way, great reaction when Clint grabs the guy and throws him up against the wall. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And uh, did, was that true shock because you didn't expect it to be that hard, or was that just good acting? Good acting. Okay, bravo. Thank you, you thank you. you I'll be here all week. Should have gotten the Oscar for that. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, and and uh, then later on, uh, he throws a firebomb into right. Clint's car. First, I think out his back window with a baseball bat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. But didn't you throw? Did you throw the Molotov cocktail? Yes. Yes, yeah. I did. Yes. And you throw it, and uh, you, Clint's car gets on fire. And the last thing you want to have happen is for Dirty Harry's car to catch fire. Right. Right. Because then now we shot that. We shot that scene. Yeah. First of all, they were going to use stunt guys to do the breaking of the bat and throwing the Molotov. And Clint said, "These guys are having such a great time." Let them do it. So we got to do our own stunts. Oh, wow. wow. And when, when I threw the Molotov cocktail, first of all, I thought I wasn't going to be able to break the back window. You know, I thought all 150 pounds of me is going to be just bouncing a bat off the back window. Yeah. And they put a nail in it. So when I hit the window, the nail shattered everything. Oh, And okay. the adrenaline. And the adrenaline. Wow. Wow. And then I got the, I threw the Molotov cocktail, I got that one take. So a bitch. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, well, if anybody wants to see Stephen, uh, uh, in his early days, a young youth, uh, he's in, uh, in Sudden Impact, he's in Howard the Duck. Uh, <laughs> he, he, we won't even make it. I got approached by this other podcast that was actually doing a feature on Howard the Duck and they tracked me down. All you did, you were kissing a girl. Kissing a girl, and then he comes slamming through a, a brick wall, and I go, what the? And then I take a sign that says for rent or something like that, and I try to smash him with it. I see. And that was you, and that, oh, was, yeah. well, that, was, uh, that was you in uh, Howard the Duck. That was my very first film. Howard the Duck? Yeah. Oh, I thought that the Clint's film was the first, but that's the one I claim is my first. Oh, I see. You don't want anybody to know you did Howard the Duck. That's correct. Well, but look, you don't have to feel bad about Howard the Duck. It wasn't your fault. It sucked. No, it wasn't. You did your you did your job. That's right. You know. And I got to kiss a very pretty girl. Yeah. Do you remember who she was? No. 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 Was she enjoying kissing you? She didn't complain. Oh, okay. Were you really kissing? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Because sometimes it's like the movie kiss, you know, with the closed mouths. You know? Right, right. No, we were we were kissing. Oh, really? Tongues? Yeah. With tongues? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh really? Yeah. Boy, this movie bracket ain't bad, is it? No, it's not at all. No. It's really been very, very good to you, as a matter of fact. That's like a... When I shot Woman in Red with Gene Wilder. Yeah, that's the film in which I, you get a credit, but you're not in it. I never get in front of the camera. But you but get. But I'm in the credit. And do you still get checks for it? Nah, if I get them for like under a quarter. You know, I'm still getting checks for a Bill Maher uh, one night stand that I announced back in 20 years ago. Really? Yeah, it's like it's oh, you know, it's like 
seven dollars or something right well up until this year i was still getting checks from sudden impact oh really yeah okay you might get some more it's on hbo max i might i yeah, might we'll yeah. see you know but uh not, not a bad racket folks if you can get into it if you'd had enough movie roles you could be taking care of that dental work right now right 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 yeah, right yeah. right well, I think our time is up here. We have actually gone our normal 25 minutes. Right. And I'm sick and you're sick, and we did a yeoman job here because we're professionals. That's right. That's how you know the pros yeah. from the amateurs. Okay, well, I won't see you next week because I'm taking the week off. Right, right, right. Because I have dental work, uh, eye work to be done. Right, 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 and, right. And then uh, I'll see you the following week. Ladies and gentlemen, well, well, yes, well, well, we'll figure that out in a second. Let me just say goodbye to you. That's right. Stephen Kravitz, ladies and gentlemen. Goodbye, folks. Thanks for watching. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey, hello, everybody, and I'm out of sync. See, see what happens? I, I go out of sync. It, it just uh, happens. Uh, uh, okay, well, I, I give up on that. Okay, I'm giving up on... Uh, let me... I wonder if I just stopped... Uh, well, if I, I, I think if I stop uh, um, my... Uh, uh, what do you call it? The uh, uh, Zoom. See, I would be in sync. Th this has been a problem we've been having for a week now, and I have no way of solving it at all. So the best way to do it is to go to the uh, go to actually go to the uh, the Zoom of which I only have a couple of people here because I guess nobody believed I was alive still. <laughs> and and uh, oh, okay, okay, who is uh, you okay? All right. Hello. Hello all of you people, all you th two people here. Uh, <laughs> well, we're surprised that you're alive, but well, I'm surprised I'm alive, you know. <laughs> Uh, I'm not feeling that great tonight, but you know, I mean, I'm, I'm. Let me put it this way: whatever was wrong with me is not wrong with me any longer. So oh, that's, you know, that's a good improvement. It is, it is, it is an improvement of sorts. Um, no, what happened was, I guess it was Saturday night. I was talking to you, Josh, right? And I said I was starting to get kind of a cold. Yes, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, that was Saturday. And then Sunday, I came down with it kind of, not full force, but quite a bit. And then Monday, I did our Monday show, and I managed to get through it. And then Tuesday night, I there was no way I could do a show. I was just deadly ill with, I was just, I don't know, had... Uh, uh, coughing and sneezing and and all of that, no temperature by the way, so probably not COVID. Uh, and uh, I, uh, I I I uh, I, I uh, took the night off, and the next night I felt worse than I did the night before, so I took that night off, and then on Thursday night uh, I felt uh, uh, still felt I felt better yesterday uh, and uh, then today I didn't I woke up and I didn't have any of the cold or anything like that or congestion or whatever and that seemed to be gone so I said I'll do a show tonight then I went out I took my walk and I haven't walked in about four days I could barely do it I was so I, I guess I was so exhausted from mm -hmm. you know whatever cold I had and I think it was a cold. I don't think it was anything else. So today I had to go. Today I get a call from my, I have to have my eyes done next week. That's why I won't be on next week. I have to have these eyes lifted here. So then I'll look like this next week. It can look surprised all the time. Look surprised all the time, yeah. But I'm going to be hurting for, not hurting, but in discomfort for a day or two. And, and uh, for the rest of the week, I'm going to look like somebody had beaten the crap out of me. Uh, so <clears throat> I can't do the show then. I'll probably do a show the following week, but I'll probably be doing it with dark glasses on uh, because I will have still be, be bruised. But we'll see what mm -hmm. happens with that. But anyway, so I get a call today 
from my doctor, the one that's going to do the work, and it's from his nurse, and she says, well, have you, you have, I want to remind you, you have to go get your COVID test. I said, what COVID test? Because when I went, they looked at all my, you know, my vaccinations and things like that and said, that's all we need. So I figured, you know, now they're telling me on Friday that I've got to, so I, I went over to his office and he did the swab, which I had never really had one full force. That's not comfortable. You know, I mean, Sometimes. well, this wasn't comfortable. Yeah. I'm sure if I had done uh, 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 Brian's system, I'd probably be fine and it wouldn't have hurt at all, right? Yes, yeah. we'll be gentle. <laughs> You'd be gentle, right? Um, but anyway, we believe my doctor said, well, you know, I said, I've been sick for the last the week. I said, I'm better now. <clears throat> I said, but uh, I just got over it yesterday. It started to go away and today it's gone. And he said, well, you might have had COVID. I said, but I didn't have any temperature. And he said, it doesn't matter. We don't know whether you have it or not. That, that's never an indicator. Then why do we do temperature reading everywhere? Yeah, then why do we do temperature readings? <clears throat> Give me a break. So anyway, I'm, gonna, I'm going to, uh, I, I, I will be, not be here next week unless I don't pass my COVID test, in which wow. case I'll be here next week and I'll be, I guess I'll have COVID or something. I don't know. <laughs> well, I think if I had have COVID, I already had it. Yeah, but what I got last week does sound to you, does it, Brian, like I had uh, COVID? No, uh, that's why I asked you if you have the sniffles, you know. If you have cold stuff, then then you should be fine. Well, I had sniffles. I was all plugged up and everything. You know? Yeah, it's not flu-like symptoms. And a little, little sore, sore throat for which I would take. I had a tickle in my throat right here, oh. you know. And today, I've, all I have left is a cough, and it's like the stuff getting rid of itself. You know. Yeah, that's fine. But I'm exhausted. I mean, I hope I can get through mm -hmm. this hour okay. What, what, Tony? See, I was worried you had COVID, Alex. Cause, well, you, I, when I had it in January, I had the nasal drip, and I was tired a little bit, and I had the cough. Because you sounded really congested that day on Monday when I listened to the show. <laughs> yeah, but, but did you ever check to go see whether you had it or not? No, I, I tested positive. I did. They stuck it up my nose. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and but that the, just because you test positive doesn't mean you have it. Well, I was positive, so they told me to quarantine yeah. when I went yeah. for it. So, so did you have it for weeks? I had a quarantine in January for uh, ten days. Yeah, they were calling my house and everything out of the city. You know, did you come in contact with anybody? I was getting that call every day. I, I, I believe me, I don't know where, if I got it, I don't know where I could have gotten it. See, I know where I got it. I, that's what I was saying. You don't really go out unless when you were doing your walks. I was telling Phil, maybe when you get a walk in the park. Yeah, I don't know. But then I'm, I'm, in, I'm distanced from people. Yeah. You, you know. Maybe Marjorie's been working from the house. I said, how can he have gotten this? You know, because you don't really have nobody in the house, really, which well, is good. She has come into contact with people who have come into contact. So there you go then, yeah. Yeah, who knows? I mean, you know. But you got the vaccine, thank God, Alex. When I came, when I came into it, I didn't have the vaccine in January. That's when my mother passed away. Yeah, yeah. But, you know. I, well, I I mean, you. What you would have now is a breakthrough case, I think. Well, that would be what it's called because it's, yeah. uh, you know. Uh, what, what were you saying, Brian? I said that's why I asked you last week or, or Monday or whatever it was that if the seasons have been changing, the temperatures have been changing over there because it's been changing a little bit over here and a couple of people are working around and sick, but it's been cold stuff. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and, you know, I mean, it, you get frightened when you get a cold like this, but I mean, it was it was a rather bad cold. I don't get colds usually this bad. Alex, you don't mind me asking, maybe it was the, do you have the air conditioner on tonight? Because sometimes when I have the air on, it dries me up. That, that could have done it. It could have helped, certainly. But sometimes the other night, I had to turn the air conditioner off Sunday. I was so dried up at night. Yeah, because. The air conditioner would be too cold. But, you know, I, to, even getting a cold, you know, uh, I read that people are starting to get colds more again. They weren't getting them during COVID. Why? Because everybody was wearing masks. And everybody was quarantined. And everybody yeah. was quarantined. So now the, everybody thinks you can go out and just wear a mask in your pocket. 
I, I think we're being too loosey goosey with the whole thing myself. I agree. I think I'm, happy. Huh? Yeah, I'm, I'm happy my company stayed with our social distancing straight through. Yeah. Because we work very, there's a lot of people at work. So that, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm happy that they didn't start loosening up when California loosened up a little bit. So. Well, uh, California loosened up. How loose? No, I'm saying months ago. Months ago, when they loosened up, our company kept on, you know, with our stuff still. When they say like indoors, you know, you're okay and all that stuff, we kept on the mask. So. Well, who knows? I might wind up having COVID for all we know, you know. But you, thank God you got the vaccine. I was saying, because you're safe then. You really, well, because you look fine now. You look pretty good now, Alex. The uh, vaccine, you know. Yeah, well, I was, I was just there were a couple of days there where I was sleeping a lot and I was just not feeling. I was feeling lousy. Yeah. yeah, but it wasn't. I didn't have, I didn't have respiratory problems. You neither did I. I was breathing myself. I got tired in the afternoon. I was sleeping on the chair. I get tired all the time, but because I'm 81 years old, you know. So, that's, that's so you're, and no temperature, which is good. But my mother didn't. Me didn't have a temperature either. I was going to tell you that. She didn't have a temperature. No, I had the electronic one, and at night before she got bed, I was always taking well, me and my husband. I had, the I had a, um, I have the, you know, the, that, and I ha also have a oral thermometer. Oh, you got both. Okay. Yeah, and I never, my temperature stayed at around ninety-seven six or that, something like that. Was that was like me, like ninety-seven eight. 90, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when I went and used the oral thermometer for a couple of days there, I was coming oh, up with uh, at ninety-nine. Ooh, so it's, oh, so that's more accurate. Isn't it? Well, is it more accurate? I would imagine, right? But isn't the temperature now 100.3 or no? Well, when you're 100, when you're 101.5, you start worrying. Oh, oh okay. Shit, okay. 99, well, you don't worry at 99, right, Brian? Uh, I do, because I'm using 97. I'm very cool. But, yeah, yeah, but yeah. I mean, what, what 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 is more? Why is there such a difference between the oral and the digital? What about the rectal? I don't know. Well, well, always but I mean, orals. but they're always they're, you know when you're going into places and stuff like that, they're always using the, uh, you know, the, the, the thing, you know, the yeah, uh, the infrared IR little yeah, thing. Yeah. Yeah. So which one do you believe? I don't know. Yeah. My mother always used the one in my tongue, Alex, in the mouth. She never liked the electric. Yeah, but, uh, but my question still is. Oh, which one you believe? I don't know. I bet you the one in the mouth is better. Then how come everybody, where you go, doctor's offices, uh, You're right. restaurants, everything like I that? that. Yeah, yeah, why is that? Yeah, maybe they're just trying to see the gross, the gross high temperature people. <laughs> Not the, you know. And they really don't want to stick the thermometer in your mouth, probably. Well, the anyway, so I mean, I, the highest I went was at like 99. Uh, and so who knows, you know. Who knows? Who knows? You know, I just. He survived. Uh, mm. But there was mm -hmm. somebody on, on the thing, on the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the uh, chat or Facebook. something. Yeah. Who you saw and you answered, Brian, or on my uh, yeah my Facebook page? Facebook, yeah. So get tested. <laughs> yeah, I saw that too. <laughs> it's like, what do you what know? Do you I, it, to begin with, I looked up all the all the symptoms of COVID. Okay, okay? and yeah. of all those symptoms, I only had two, and both of them were minor ones. You know, one was a, st a stuffy nose, and the other was congestion. Okay. That was yeah. it. But I didn't have temperature, didn't have, uh, well, I had sneezing. I was believing for a while there, and maybe it's still true, that it was allergies. Could be. Yeah, it could be, you know. Because I was Because you sneezing. do have allergies. I was sneezing. And you're not always thinking, you did take the flu shot, Alex. Remember the week before? What? I didn't take the flu shot. Oh, I thought you said you got the flu shot. No. Booster number three. I got booster number three. Oh, that's right. I thought maybe you took the flu and the booster in a week. I was like, wow. Yeah, I got booster. I got booster number three, Moderna. That's the I, best one too. Thank God. They say it is the best one. Yeah, it's like potent. Well, they, be huh? be in good shape, be a healthy person, and any one of them are good. And Ooh. and what? And any one of them are good. And any one of them are good. Yeah. Yeah. 
Even the Johnson and Johnson, would you say? I don't know about the Johnson and Johnson. <laughs> I, don't <laughs> know, I don't want a one shot. They often need the two, I heard. That doesn't no. count. Uh, one. I don't want the one. You try to kill me. I want to be busy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, uh, supposedly, well, they do say that Moderna now they're giving the edge to. That it on the long term is, <laughs> is, is lasting longer and has its efficacy lasting longer than yeah. mm. Pfizer is. Yeah, as it goes, they're getting more data and more data. You know, they, they're still up in there. And but, you know, stuff. I said to the doctor, I said, but I didn't have a temperature. He says, ah, that doesn't matter. What do we know? Yeah. <laughs> that's honest. That's so encouraging. And that is the that's most honest good. answer I've gotten on anything where this is concerned. Yeah. Yeah, what do we know? It's supposed to be the moment of truth. Uh -huh. What do I know? Well, you went to school. Wait, you go to school. That's what I used to tell. Yeah. yeah. I, it I, I, pretty I, good right now, though. So. Hmm? Alex used to say all the time that they may have flunked that part of the part of the you know being a doctor that, that you're going in for so How many times did you take uh, yeah well i mean doctor. suppose i go to a doctor and i've got say oh i don't know um uh, uh, ingrown toenail uh -huh. and, and in in college he flunked into ingrown toenails i still got a it doctor doesn't say it doesn't say on the on the thing on his wall flunk pass this pass this <laughs> flunked toenails you know ingrown toenails they get a failed heart. You know, have all heart conditions. Maybe he didn't study that well, and then you're going in for some kind of heart issue, and he just sort of wings it. Well, you you know, a, to just be a doctor, you don't have to really have a specialty, do you? Nope. Oh. Nope. You know. So, you know, you could be going to a... I mean, like it's uh, what's his name? Uh, the guy down in Kentucky, the uh, senator, Rand Paul. Oh, I can't do it. Doctor Rand Paul. I can't believe he's a doctor. Yeah, he's a doctor. He's a podiatrist. He looks so when he he's a, a podiatrist. Oh, he did. The, he's my mother's foot doctor. He used to cut the nails. Yeah, yeah, he's a podiatrist. No, he's not a doctor. Then I can do that myself. <laughs> what did you, you say, John? He's an ophthalmologist. Oh, ophthalmologist. Excuse me. I'm sorry. Even worse, he's an ophthalmologist. Yeah, he's a hundred paperbacks. At least if he were a podiatrist, I'd probably have reason to go see him occasionally, you know. Oh, but an ophthalmologist, oh boy. And then he's giving out medical advice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. My, my friend's an ophthalmologist. <laughs> yes. <That's practice. laughs> yeah. He has a mask. He has a mask with glasses all over it. <laughs> I think that's one step above uh, a chiropractor. Hmm? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yep. Well, you know, be that as it may. I, you yep. know. So I, I, I don't know. I mean, and the doctor just said, we, you know, you know, he said you might have had, you might have had COVID. He said, but, you know, I told him I didn't think so. And then I said I had my, I had three, the three shots. Yeah. You know, but I've just been exhausted. I mean, today I took my walk and I was just, uh, was really difficult really difficult mm. but i haven't gone walking for a couple of days and this did you know how sometimes you get a cold for about four days five days and then it takes you a week to get over it yeah cough. Mm -hmm. huh yeah the cough for me lately the cough lasts like another week oh really mine that's not the case with me with me it's just that i'm i'm weak just you know have you slept uh, maybe at night you might have not been waking up maybe you don't get the complete no, sleep i slept like a rock well, that's good. All right. Yeah. You know, I sleep like I'm practicing for death. <laughs> You're <laughs> <finished>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I like this and goes, this going to be like, you know, and I, at certain yeah, well, points, I, say, I wake up and say, am I still alive? You know. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. But how have you guys been doing? Jeff, how you been doing? Good. I was on my bike today. Yeah. I took my little... <laughs> five miles or less <clears throat> really i can only walk about a mile and a half right now yeah but i'm on a bike it's easier right? it's easier yeah yeah you half of it it's downhill oh wow well. i know but coming back yeah. is the tough part <laughs> yeah you have to if you go downhill you gotta come back up but he, that's right that's the problem yeah do you going walk back up? it's tough do you walk it up sometimes no no okay so no, it's not I, that I mean, sometimes I'll I'll stop and take a little uh, little water, take a drink. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
But anyway, so we, we so what have you been doing, John? You've been working? Yeah, and um, playing pool in my pool league. But uh, we're you know working at night at the theaters. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well. And uh, how about you, Josh? What's uh, what's new with you? Nothing new. Just uh, was off the last couple of days, and uh, go figure. You didn't have a show, so yeah. <laughs> I uh, no big deal. I should have messaged you and told you just uh, turn the show on. I'd have filled in for you. I would. Mm. I, I probably would have let you. If but I might not have even had the strength to do that. Yeah, that's yeah. why I didn't want to bug you. You know, it was just it was a uh, you know. I mean, it's even kind of difficult for me to do this tonight, just because they just don't have the the strength, you know. But I'm doing it. Yeah, they, I was surprised you, you were going to be here tonight. And I don't look unhealthy, do I? No, you look fine, actually. Uh oh, know. I'm going to sneeze. Well, Hold on. Still, a lot of stuff coming out of me, you know. Yeah. But it's not. It's not like it's dripping. It's nothing like that. Where before, it was just constantly dripping, you know. Hmm. Excuse me, folks. I so know you know, I went to New York the other day. Did you really? Yeah. What did you do in New York? Yeah, I went to the Metropolitan Museum. To to see and, what? And we saw this very strange combination of women from the 20s, 30s, and 40s mm -hmm. who were uh, photographers. Mm -hmm. And different photographers, most of them black and white. Yeah. And uh, mm -hmm. very interesting. And, you know, where they came from, how they got there, why they went to Brazil because they were getting thrown out of Germany and stuff like that, you know. Was, like Georgia O'Keeffe? Um... Not particularly. No. Pam, was, was it O'Keefe? Uh, no. No. No, it's, no, it's more unnamed. Came after that, yeah. right? Kind of unnamed people. Yeah, maybe the fourth. Yeah. Yeah, but it was really good, and and it was a lot of a lot of photographs, and a, for all from different people. So it's quite interesting. Really? And uh, um, uh, by the way, Adrian sent me a very nice get well video yesterday. Cool. Oh. Yeah. You should see the outtakes. What? <laughs> you should see the outtakes. You mean she didn't get that in one take? <laughs> really? She started screaming it and getting all excited, and oh my gosh, yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> she's just. She's got a great sense of humor on her, so. You should yeah. have sent me with some of the outtakes. You should have sent. <laughs> I know. I almost did. I was gonna put him on my my movie maker and sort of mash everything together. It was pretty funny. Yeah. No. It's, it was. She it, was concerned. It, it, she was wondering why I wasn't on the show too. Yeah. Well, I. I, I yeah. 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 Well, I know that uh, in this day and age that we live in, when I don't do a show, do pe some people do worry. Mm. You know. And uh, I, I wish I, I wish I could come back and say, "Wow, I had a bout of the COVID or whatever." But I don't think that's what it was. I mean, it just didn't have any of the the keynotes of of uh, the grace notes, as it were, of of the uh, of the uh, COVID. Of COVID. Uh, I was just uh, it just like I had a bad cold. Yeah. You know? But uh, Pam called Marjorie to see. How healthy you are, and whether or not we were going to stop by and see you, but she said, "No, nah, keep him in bed." Marjorie didn't even tell me. See, Marjorie didn't. Yeah, we were going to have lunch with you, but and and maybe we go to the museum, but she didn't you even tell out. me you called. Pam and uh, Marjorie uh, talked. She, when I'm sick, she yeah, texts her. I don't know. I, 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 I just think that, like, I, you know where I've, had, where I've had to sleep the last couple of nights? In the guest room. <laughs> <laughs> because she didn't want to get whatever I had. Well, that's, 
your quantum. I, I understand. Well, I understand that if she didn't, if she asked me on the first night I got sick, but she asked me like on the third night I got I mean, sick. Yeah, she's probably I'm got thinking, it. I'm thinking you if you're gonna get it, you're gonna get it. You know. Well, I had gotten COVID test, and the test said that I was uh, negative. No, you're I mean, positive. positive. Yeah. yeah. And so then I was down in the basement for like five days to get retested, and I was fine. Oh, they've had people, they, they did this thing. Uh, did you see about the, the view, the women on the view? Oh, yeah. Did you they, see that? They, they, yeah. Our vice yeah. president was a guest on the show, and just before she was supposed to get on, they had done tests on all the hosts on that Ooh. show. And during the break, they got the results. I don't know why they don't get the results before the show goes on or after the show goes on. They got them right during the show and found out that two of the women tested positive. Uh, so they had to immediately get them off the set of the show. Mm -hmm. And they didn't even let our vice president come on the set. She had to do it from the dressing room, the interview. Are they, are they vaccinated? And they were vaccinated too. Oh, they are, right. And then wow. they gave them a rapid test mm -hmm. and they, they were negative. So, okay. you know. Those things aren't really very accurate, are they? I mean, yeah, the, the rapid tests are the ones that are not that accurate. So they do the rapid test really quick just to screen people, sort of. Yeah, but I mean, I've seen the same thing. I mean, it's happened, you know, a dozen or so times. And like Major League Baseball this year, well, they'll come out, you know, and take a player out of the game in like the middle of the fourth inning because they failed their pregame test. And I'm like, you couldn't have given him, like, can you not start the test earlier or something? I mean, I, I mean, like you're saying, you know, I mean, like, I mean, if you took it at three o'clock in the afternoon and it ended up, you got the result in the middle of the show, could you not have done it at two o'clock in the afternoon? I mean, I don't know. Maybe I don't, maybe I don't understand how it works, but it just, you yeah. know, it's like, what's maybe. the deal with that? Yeah. I don't know. And then, you know, a lot of these guys, they come out of the game or whatever, and then, you know, then they got to miss the next night's game while they wait for some other kind of test. And then it was like, oh, it, yeah, it was fine. It was a false positive. It's like, oh, well, gee, thanks. You know, <laughs> it totally, yeah, totally screwed everybody up. But. Right, right. But, but, you know, I mean, uh, oh, my eyes are tearing. No, excuse me, folks. I, I hate doing this with the, I think the tearing of the eyes has more to do with what they got to mm. do with the operation. <laughs> But uh, anyway, so well, that's the way I am. I'm just uh, I'm just uh, tired, <clears throat> and uh, uh, but I woke up this morning and I went, "Thank God, I'm feeling great." Mm -hmm. Right? And then I get this call from my doctor's office. All right, did you get the COVID test? And I went, <laughs> "What COVID test?" Yeah, if, if you're gonna go in for any kind of like surgery or any procedure where they're going to check you in or whatever i think now you have to go get yeah, yes but you know but a test before but when months ago but two months ago when i did all my stuff with the doctor they said do you have your vaccination stuff and i gave them that and i said do you need me to get a covid test and they said oh no this will be the hospital will accept this yeah and well apparently not and today, three days before the operation, I get a call saying he got to run. So I, I had to rush down to the doctor's office and get it. And I was just getting over this thing. I just wanted to lie in bed and kind of feel better and slowly heal myself and whatever. And well, that didn't happen. So, you know. Um, yeah, that's the way. Yeah, I mean, that, you know, my wife had to do it when she had her surgery, you know, when she fell down and everything. I mean, they, they just make you... Go somewhere within like 72 hours of the check-in or whatever. Get one at one of their locations so the results can be sent to them I and all think that. Your mic, you know. I think your mic is rubbing against something, uh, Josh. Where's your microphone? I really don't know. On the computer oh, or somewhere. On the computer. Then somebody else's mic is maybe making noise. I don't oh, know. Hello, Ray. How are you? you well, <laughs> turn on your mic. It, 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 now it's, it's, it's there, but it's a little, little, not loud. Hmm. I, I'm doing okay. 
How are you doing? Fine. Hmm. Good. There you go. There. Yeah. Now the automat. That's better. Yeah. Yeah. You were sick. You're feeling better. I'm feeling bad. Oh yeah. Oh, considerably. You know, compared oh, to how I was feeling. But I'm feeling exhausted. You know. Uh, yeah. Because you know how cold can exhaust you. And, oh, I know. And as I said today, I wish I'd been able to get up and just kind of lie there and enjoy waking up and not being sick. And all of a sudden, I get a call from the doctor's office. Hey, go get your COVID test. Oh no. Yeah. yeah. You you don't ha you don't have it, do you? Not that I know of. I didn't oh, have it. Wondering. I mean, I don't know. COVID doesn't last four days, five days, does it? And then goes away. I don't think so. I don't think so. Well, maybe with the uh, after you got the, the shots. No, maybe. supposedly even the if you have a breakthrough, it can last four weeks. <laughs> you know. Maybe yeah, maybe not though. Well, you know, none of us are doctors, so we don't know. Right. <laughs> and since my doctor doesn't believe anything, so you know. <laughs> <coughs> I gotta put something on. Anyway. Uh, oh, we have the we have the Tony uh, uh, background on. Yeah, uh, you know, it's got to be done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Actually, Tony's background has kind of changed a little, although you can't see. It, move out of there a second, Tony, and people it'll lighten up and everybody can see. Yeah, there. See how it matches up, folks. <laughs> That's how you can tell it's the Tony background. A lovely wallpaper. May she rest in peace. You're right, Alex. It's idiot. Are you gonna, <laughs> you're never really noticed. Are you gonna keep that wallpaper. <laughs> you never noticed it. You're gonna keep that wallpaper, aren't you? I'm gonna rip. We we may. Well, if we ever rent the apartment, we're probably gonna have to rip it up. We're probably gonna have to take it off. But I don't know. We should keep it up though. <laughs> She's just driving the tenants crazy. <laughs> oh, what was that movie with the hotel? The Shining. Remember the Shining? <laughs> This will drive you crazy, red rum. <laughs> red rum, yeah, right. So, anyway. Did you see Joe Biden won Arizona? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, do we swear him in again or anything? Uh, I don't know. Here, in case people aren't familiar with what <laughs> we're talking about, does everybody that. know what we're talking about? They've been having this recount in uh, Arizona. Arizona, Maricopa Arizona. County. And uh, they, <clears throat> uh, they to, to see if the... the you know the results were correct. Uh, uncover they, the fraud, the steal. They spent three hundred and fifty-five thousand dollars, I think, to do mm -hmm. it. Uh, and this organization did it, and uh, it uh, the results came in today, and what came out was Biden won by a few more votes <laughs> than, <laughs> than was originally reported, and Trump lost by about a couple of hundred votes. So uh, you know when the when the same communists count the same votes over and over again. <laughs> that's what happens. Right. Those damn sneaky commies. You know, you think after a while, he, he won by he won by enough that I, I'd have just been like, look, if it means that much to you, we'll just fucking give you Arizona. Okay, you you can just have it. Uh, it, it just could, well, they change could, it in the books, okay? I mean, wow. that, you can have Georgia too. Is that is that make you feel better, Trump? I mean, guess what? I still fucking won. I mean, <laughs> get over it. Well, I think they could have gotten. Let's see. They could have got. They could have given up uh, Arizona, and they probably could have given up uh, Pennsylvania if they had to, and he still would have won. You know. Mm -hmm. So I mean, uh, that's what I'm saying. All these, I mean, all these states that they had some of these issues with. I mean, you know. Yeah. And I wish we had either Scott Boddicker here, or or Jack Bishop, or uh, 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 Charlie Wallace here tonight, because in Texas they're making them recount. Oh God. And who's making them recount a county? Trump. But but only. But he only. Won, the, but he won. Only the big, well, big counties that that Biden won. But Trump won the electoral oh, votes from that he's, state. He's just trying to throw a wrench in the whole fucking system of democracy. So it'll just be that much weaker when he runs again in uh, 2024. Well, you know what all these states should do is say, sure, we'll be happy to recount if you'll pay for it. <laughs> right. But you have to pay up front and in cash. Yep. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, well, where was it where he had to pay? 
up front, and he could only pay up front so much that they would only count so many votes. Do you remember that? Be. I mean, you, know, you gotta fucking pay up front. I mean, he's not exactly known to be, you know, good for his money, so you might want to get it first. Yep, yep, absolutely. Remember that German uh, company that that Trump uh, had invested all kinds of money or got money from this bank and that oh, he was Deutsche. supposed to t tell the United States what he actually did and he was supposed to provide all the information? Still never did it. Deutsche Bank. Yeah, that's yeah. 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 I mean, I would say that the only person that Donald Trump probably pays regularly on time is his bankruptcy attorney, you know? because he uses that guy a lot and he continues to work for him. So he apparently pays him, but everybody else, it doesn't look like, you know, it works out for him too well. Right. There are some questions as to whether he winds up paying his attorneys. Well, he might not. I mean, you know, maybe that guy's just a really nice guy or whatever. Because you hear, you hear about them leaving a lot, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the previous attorney quit, right? Or... Yeah, Trump fired him. I think all the big ones are taken off. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and the rumors now, and I've been saying this for quite a while, that uh, that uh, uh, Trump Tower is in financial trouble. Uh, they're having trouble getting rentals in it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and that the bank may foreclose on Trump Tower. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> see guys standing out on the courthouse steps you know with their cashier's check bidding on it <laughs> I wonder what Phil would have to say about that <laughs> yeah, he, who, yeah, I wonder if he can he keep defending him I don't even know I, I think mean. he just does it now because he doesn't want to say he's wrong he's in too he's far probably, he's too committed yeah he's he, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he's in no ditch you know, he's got to stay in it <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you can't back out after. A, yeah, I mean, you look like an idiot. Well, well, yeah, you got to well, stick with it. Yeah, he has to take a, take a Trump pill every day <laughs> <laughs> to stay that way. Well, did you did you hear about that one guy who had COVID and he didn't want to go to the doctors because he didn't want to add to uh, Trump's, you know, death total of COVID people, oh, and he died. And he it's never amazing. went to the doctor. And I will, like, and, and along those lines, I think last week when we were talking on Saturday, I covered, you know, news that I didn't give a shit about. So is it, how many days do we go where we get one story a day of someone who, the headline is always the same, oh, they didn't believe in the vaccine and they got COVID and right before they died, they said they regretted it and go get your vaccine. I mean, I get it, okay? Do we need a different one every day? Or is there a point at which we can stop, like, making that a headline i mean I, I see everyone has one of the nbc news cnn msnbc they all have one of those a day it's like can we stop with that story it's the same i mean i i get it maybe I mean, they thought it would it. help people change yeah. their minds don't fucking get it or don't go get it but yeah. I, I mean we, well, you know there's a story story there, every day there are stories see i mean i i question when i say <laughs> what stories are important and what stories aren't important yes and a lot of times they have to do uh, with uh, stories that affect us, you know? And they take a story and they just drive it into the ground because they see it as being good copy that will get them viewers. And the latest one is this murdered girl Ripped by this story too. Out in Wyoming, which I mean is a it's it's a hell of a story. It's an interesting story, but not getting the kind of press it's yeah. getting. You know, the, the latest thing was tonight at ten, NBC will do a special. Why did uh, why did so and so I forget her name now die? Well, probably because the life was taken out of her by her boyfriend. It's just nothing. It's just nothing to discuss. You don't have any information beyond the fact that they identified her as the woman who they've been looking for, and that she was had no pulse. Okay, leave it at that. 
it's not an it's not an important story for you and me now covid's on the rise that's an important story for you and me you know uh there's problems uh in afghanistan and you know that could affect some people here in america but that one story has a life of about five minutes you know (laughs) You you seem to agree with me, Jay. Uh, yeah, that, I mean that was that was under my news that I didn't care about last Saturday yeah. when I was talking to Kevin and Patrick. I mean it was like, I mean I get it, you know that what happened to her is obviously very bad, but that's really for her family and perhaps the community that she's from or whatever. But I mean, all day that day on that Saturday, I mean, open the Twitter app and just. <laughs> See what's going on or whatever, and it's like tweet about that girl, tweet about that girl. Fucking Jesus, I get it. I mean, she's missing. I mean, you know, like I mean, but there are like a lot of people missing. I mean, get the, I mean, move on from it. And then what came after that was the story that we all knew that would be coming right after, which was a bunch of media stories saying, oh, why did we cover another pretty white girl missing, but we don't ever cover other people? It's like. You're right. I mean, because you fuckers did it. Well, I, mean, I, I was going br- to. I was going to. I, I don't know. I was going to bring. We're not begging for it. Well, I was bringing. Right. I was going to bring that up. I mean, that's the reason why this story had legs is because if she were an ugly black woman, they wouldn't be covering it. Probably be, not. Be another oh, the missing white woman syndrome. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. it, no, but the, to to add to this, she's pretty. Okay, yeah. you know, yeah. uh, she's attractive. And so that that kind of story has legs. But if she wasn't, you know, I was watching a documentary. It's on um, Netflix. And it's a documentary made uh, about female directors oh, really? and how they're discriminated against in Hollywood and how all movies that are made are made from a male point of view, not from a female point of view. Uh, and uh, this has been going on for a long time. Do you know when there was a time in the history of movies when there were more female directors and hmm. and female screenwriters than male directors and screenwriters? I bet you during the World War II. No, no. Before no, that, era? in the silent film era. Really? Up oh. until 1929, hmm. the vast majority of, fe- of writers of films were women and a large amount of them were directors. I believe, in fact, that 51% of all the writers in films during that period of time were women. And then all of a sudden, when sound came in, they stopped hiring them because they had to write dialogue rather than what we call scenario, which in silent films, you you said, okay, then you have this shot, and then this happens in this shot, and this happens in this shot, you know, and it was a scenario. When it came to writing dialogue, they stopped hiring women, and they stopped hiring them as directors. There were something like, I don't know, hundreds of female directors in silent films, and after 1929, there were only two until recent times, one of which was uh, Arsner, I think was her name, Dorothy Arsner, and the other one was Ida Lupino. And they were the only two women in the Directors Guild of America. So this whole film is about all these women who are directors and writers and producers and so on who have been going to the ACLU and been fighting the way in which women are being represented in that business. And it's a very good documentary. It's called, it's called something like Things Are Changing or I, it, it, look, at, look at the word change. And you'll probably see it there somewhere. You know what's funny? I'm reading a book out. I was telling Mr. Shekhar on 1974, the year in movies and TV. Funny you said that. They, they were. They, I'm in a chapter where they they called it the White Boys Club, where the women could get no writing roles, and then now the, the uh, they got a uh, two women got a wrote for Mary Tyler Moore, Norman Lear hired them or something, yeah. and they wrote the Chuckles episode and they won an award. She says you could never get. Any type of job they had to get, like they were like the only women that were oh, like no, this on the one, line. This one woman uh, talked about the fact that she won an award, I think, in Europe uh, for a film that she did. Was brought to America because she had gotten this award and because she was looked upon as 
as a possibly good director was hired, uh, handled by the William Morris Agency, who then had a look at several scripts and threw several scripts at her and put her name out there and nobody was interested and she never got a job. Mm. Right? Yeah, now, well, who's more hireable than somebody who won an award for like best picture at a film festival in, in Europe? Uh, and, and this has been the case though, I mean, women who, uh, there are women who say, I won a, uh, you know, I won an Academy Award for best this, that, or the other thing, and then I didn't get hired for another eight years. I didn't get to make another film for eight years. You know, so, I mean, it, 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 they're, they're now working at taking care of this. I notice, quite frankly, mm -hmm. that when it comes to television, I notice a lot of women's names when it comes to directing. I'd say close to 50% of the names on credits at the end of TV shows is a woman as a director, all right? But that may be as a result of all this activity that went on. This thing was made in 2019, but now here's the irony of this documentary. Mm. When it came to the credits, the director was a man. <laughs> <laughs> it makes no sense at all. You would think they would say, we're not going to let a man direct this. It just the optics wouldn't look good, you know. So, anyway. But, uh, so that maybe it was a trans person. A trans person? Yeah, it could be. Yeah. yeah. Then that would have been okay. By the way, I was listening to uh, Jack Bishop the other night. Yeah, because I li I like to hear when he talks about movies because he has a lot of misinformation. <laughs> about movies uh, but he was mentioning one movie that is a favorite of mine called uh, Dirty Rotten Scoundrels uh, but he couldn't remember who the star was in it and I, finally he came up with it after a while and I was going to call him up and throw this one at him and I'll throw if he's listening to me tonight I'll throw this one at him you love the movie Dirty Rotten Scoundrels Great. It is really, without peer, one of the funniest films I've ever seen. I love that film. It's a great movie. But it was made once before. Oh, really? And what was that film? And who played each of the roles? We'll just leave Jack, it at that. Jack, um, huh? Tony Curtis? No. No. Uh, no. Uh, no. I don't want to cheat, so I don't know that at all. You, you, you don't know. Here. Is it a British movie? No. American film. Charlie Chaplin. No. <laughs> no. It wasn't made that... You know, some films are like based on something that was done in the 40s. This was a film that came out in the 60s. Ooh. Yeah. 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 Um, if you're listening, Jack, you can always call right now and try to answer <laughs> that question. Uh, of course, he's probably looking it up on Google right now, your oh, Wikipedia, yeah. to find out where it came from. Yeah. But, well, and I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you what the movie was because I don't want to, yeah. I don't want to rob you of the thrill <laughs> of the answer to this rather stupid movie question. Yeah. Uh, it was a movie yeah. called Bedtime Story. And it is so like the movie that they wound up making as Dirty Rotten Scoundrel, with some of the same names and the same uh, of the women in it, and a lot of the same lines are in the original. Mm -hmm. And it was starred in the part that uh, Michael Caine played in Dirty Rotten Scoundrels, David Niven. Mm -hmm. And in the part that Steve Martin played, mm -hmm. and really, very hilarious in this part. Hold on to your seats, folks. I just looked it up. Marlon Brando. Ooh. Ooh. I've never seen that. I to see this. That movie. It, it sounds good, like a good movie. It, it, I was watching it again the other day. It's a funny film. And Brando... Was he uh, good? There's one scene in which he... Uh, there's a scene in which in Dirty Rotten Scoundrels and this film... Uh, they're playing two people who would just like to take women for money, okay? And now they have a bet on about who can get the most money out of this one particular woman. Mm -hmm. And so uh, the, the Brando character, or the 
Steve Martin character in Dirty Rotten Scoundrels uh, is, is uh, pretending to be in a wheelchair and can't walk because he has psychic trauma. And this mm. woman's willing to pay for him to get the best doctor. And of course, Kane shows up and says, I'm that best doctor. And then they have a scene in which he says, well, let's see if his legs are really lame. And he takes yeah. a big, like, cane and yeah. whips it across his legs. And Steve Martin doesn't wince. And then he, again, and Steve Martin doesn't wince. And then finally, the last line is after he does it about a third time, look, doctor, he's so happy, tears coming out of his eye. <laughs> uh, and the thing is that that scene, which I thought was brilliantly played by Steve Martin, is surpassed by the way Brando plays it in the original film. <laughs> it is, he is just, it, it's amazing, because you don't think of Marlon Brando as being comedic. Yeah, and, and he was really, you know. I think it. I think it's easier for a. Uh, uh, if if you have an actor who can do comedy, you know he's a really good actor. Am I right, Ray? Oh, sorry. Yes, absolutely. Because not only does it take the uh, the chops of acting, but then you also have to have the timing and the sensitivity and mm -hmm. the communication with the other people and. Having that, having that preciseness around about it. Well, the old uh, the, and being able to be like, uh, you know, grounded <laughs> and, and believable, like real, but at the still, at the same time, still like heightened so that people will laugh. The great. It's uh, not easy to do. The the, the Shakespearean actor, uh, uh, on his deathbed was uh, was, uh, Booth, not John Wilkes Booth, but Br 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 not John Wilkes Booth, but his brother who was oh, Edwin right. Booth. Yes. yes, and somebody said to Edwin Booth on his deathbed, what is now one of the most famous quotes ever, uh, as he was lying there dying. He said, "Is dying hard?" And he said, "No, dying is easy. Comedy's hard." <laughs> <laughs> the comedy is fun, though. Yeah, I mean, comedy. Like once you get it, once you, uh, it's just a high that you can't even. When people start cracking up, and you know falling out of their chair mm. and pain and stuff and you see it it's just the most who is that gorgeous babe that oh, Brian that's just with? me <laughs> oh say hello you don't get your paper say hello hello, hello. She, Ask Alex if she looks like man. a doll version of her mother Ask Alex. <laughs> huh? I should get the tall for me at least <laughs> yeah okay say goodnight okay close the door Gosh, she's so she's, uh, <laughs> she, she starts screaming. Uh, she's been drawing like crazy a lot. So oh, cool. Good. Yeah. She goes on YouTube and sees all the videos how to draw, and the guy tells her, oh, make mm -hmm. it upside down you and do this. So we look, both draw. Looking, looking back of you. Looking back of you. Looking back of you. I know. Right. Looking back of you. <laughs> See, she gets that from daddy. That's her comedy. Mm -hmm. That's she gets from me. Is, is she gets that from you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Bye. Bye. One of the hard things about doing comedy is uh, when you're working on it, there's nobody around laughing. So you think it's funny, but you're not sure yet yeah. until you have an audience. That will, Whether it's a film or, or the, play or well, whatever. Well, if you're doing a play up. and it's been done before, you know there are laughs there because people have laughed at them before. Yeah, you just got to do it right. You just you got to figure out how to do it right. You have to do it right. Yeah. Uh, and uh, but unless the, it's a new play, and then it's a, then it's a, a hard. Well, then there might not be any laughs there, and you're fight. You're you know you're paddling. Yeah, you don't know. Stream. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Uh, but uh, but no comedy. Comedy is hard. It's very yeah. hard. Uh, but anyway, so uh, anything else bothering you in the news, John? Uh, uh, Josh, well, I don't think so. I was uh, took a scan through it early. You know, I did see uh, they haven't uh, decided uh, whether or not they're going to be able to pass our three hundred gajillion million bazillion dollar social package Ooh. or whatever, and then they might shut the government down. That sounds fun, um, and. Uh, Biden is thinking about releasing information on Trump's activities and whereabouts on January 6th. 
to help the committee investigating the uh, tourist activity that went on that day uh, out. So, you mean that, fr know. that friendly it's gathering cool. there at the uh, at the Capitol where they were yeah. there to support? Yeah, got out of hand. They were for there a couple there. minutes, but you know, yeah, was, just a small little. It's like a, you know, like a frat party stuff. You know, <laughs> some you know, minor stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> Were they supposed to have two guys got killed? Or what? What were you going? What were you saying, Brian? Oh, I just, what, were, they, were they supposed to have some other kind of meeting, like last week or something? They were supposed to go there again. Oh yeah, yeah, that was supposed to be the big. Uh, we support the people yeah. who raided the Capitol. Mm -hmm. What happened? Well, four hundred people they said were going to show up, and I think only about a hundred did. Was it two hundred? <laughs> Yeah. Wasn't very many. We were checking on Saturday, remember? And I, I, when we, we got some information. It wasn't very much. I mean, it was barely any people at all. I mean, it's uh, you know something. Your, your, your microphone on your on your uh, your microphone on your on your computer, Josh, is rubbing against something. Now I'm moving around. There, see there, I can hear it swishing there. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, you know, not that many people showed up or anything. It was like a hundred or something it wasn't yeah. very many it was a complete failure but then they didn't they go I'm, online and say don't show up because they're they're doing it on purpose to get us yeah maybe i think something like that i mean they were pretty prepared for him and all that the uh, you know whether or not uh, biden releases that like i don't know what they have some sort of you know like minute by minute or hour by hour breakdown of trump's activities or you know maybe the logs of his calls or whatever whatever records they have that he's thinking about releasing i mean that's that's fairly interesting because i know that everybody thinks that you know we should have that info and everything because everyone you know on here totally you know is crazy about what happened on january 6th and everything you know and rightly so but i'm just saying it's just it's just kind of fascinating to me because presidents do not typically give out that kind of information about their predecessors you know it'll it'll just be sort of a you know be a unique deal i mean you know well, it's quick, just not quick, something that happens a lot uh if at all so it's well, kind of and a president like trump is you know not yeah. out of the ordinary he's a pretty normal president right yeah right he's your average president yeah uh yeah yeah i mean i'm not saying right or wrong right now i mean i haven't really looked at it too much i'm just saying that's it's kind of a well, you know, they're saying um, he doesn't have to. That he, president's club, it's a little, well, little different. They're saying he doesn't have to testify because he has uh, executive privilege. And, well, um, and you don't my, have my argument, the, well, the argument. You don't have executive privilege if you're not the president. Well, that's what they're saying, you, you yeah. know, that he, he can't claim that. You know. right. Hey, there's our theme. Boy. Well, we didn't we didn't get a lot of people calling tonight because obviously they all thought I was dead, and uh, decided to. Alex give up Bennett on is me. still alive. Yeah, I should. I, 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 wait a minute. Hold on a second. I think I can. Where where is it here? Is it here somewhere? <laughs> there we go. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Wait a minute. Oh, it's not working. Oh, okay. Well, then I I won't. Uh, I, I guess I can't. Oh, I see. That's why I can't play. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. This is Gilbert Gottfried, and this is the show that O.J. Simpson was driving home to listen to, <laughs> Alex Bennett. Yeah, anyway, there we go. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 hey, listen, thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, Tony. Thank you to uh, 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 our good friend, uh, 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 John Larkin, and, of course, to Ray Renati. Uh, uh, will uh, uh, chances are I will not be here next week, but you know you never know if I fail my COVID right. test. But I'm gonna go. I'm gonna get off the air now and go study for it. Okay. So everybody, why don't you give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay. There they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our that's our uh, uh, folks on the citizen panel. Let me just uh, get rid of them here, because if I get rid of them, then I'll be back in sync again, okay? Anyway, that's it for tonight. Uh, that's it for the week. Thank you so much for putting up with the fact that I wasn't doing a show uh, most nights this week because of this. I think it was a cold. Uh, and uh, stay tuned for Jack Bishop. He's next.
over most of this same gap. Matt, he'll be taking your calls on Skype. In the meantime, I'll see you uh, on Monday when we do our little pop-up show, 4 o'clock right here. I'll do, we do that on Facebook, okay? And in the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Be sure you get a test or a mask or a vaccine or something so we'll feel safer. Good night, everybody.